Commonwealth of Dominica is an island located in the Caribbean, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic. Thousands of years ago the island was inhabited by a pre-Columbian people known as the Arawak. They originated in the Orinoco Basin in South America. In the 1300s they were replaced by a new more warlike people. These people were called the Kalinago. The island was later settled by Europeans who attempted to enforce labour on Africans that they largely imported from the areas of Senegambia, Guinea Coast and the Bight of Biafra. From 1764 to 1808 it is estimated that about 100,000 Africans were transported to Dominica over the course of 44 years. Approximately 1 in 15 Africans died in an attempt to revolt at sea. Countless others participated in successful mutinies. However, there were thousands who did not stay in Dominica because they were shipped to other colonies in the Caribbean or America. Africans would often flee captivity, using the lush interior as a base to launch attacks on European colonisers. These Africans would later go on to be known as a maroon colony in its own right. According to the Dominica-born historian and anthropologist Lennox Honeychurch, colonial settlements didn't extend beyond two miles of the coast, leaving an area roughly measuring 160 square miles under maroon control. Just to put that into proportion, the maroons occupied an area roughly the size of Barbados, living in relative freedom and autonomy. The French and the English fought over Dominica for many centuries, and the maroons would often antagonise relationships between the two, encouraging them to fight amongst themselves. Britain may have colonised areas of Dominica, but the Europeans never managed to penetrate the maroon-controlled interior, so to say that Dominica was under British control is a little bit misleading. There were two main ports in Dominica, Roseau, which is the state's capital, and we also have Portsmouth, which is a big town in the north. Britain had garrisons in both of these locations, and a series of settlers who would grow mostly coffee or indigo on several plantations around the coastal areas, using forced labour from imported Africans or occasionally indentured Europeans, usually Irish or Scotsmen. Dominica may have been colonised in part, but it was never really conquered. Dominicans fought for their liberty and their freedom. The mountains and waterfalls of Dominica allowed the Maroons geographical control. They were able to conserve a unique subculture of African language, music and spiritual divination. Over the course of 200 years they waged war against the colonial powers, looting and plundering plantations and wreaking havoc on the European settlers. There are numerous accounts taken from court records documenting a series of attacks by Dominica's maroon community. Many of our sources come from Thomas Atwood's History of an Island of Dominica. Here's a quote. The maroons were armed with muskets, bayonets, and cutlasses, on what plantations they thought proper to rob, in the open day, nay, they often came in the same manner. The maroon colony had established numerous villages each one represented by a chief. Some of the leaders have been documented in historical archives, and these include Parcel, Congo Jack, Gory Greg, Jacko, Bala, Elephant, and female heroines like Angelique and Calypso. The conch shell was used by Dominican Maroons to rain terror on British settlers. They would blow the conch shell before mounting an attack. The sound would reverberate through the valleys and gullies of Dominica. Eyewitness accounts from British settlers at the time. Quote Exasperated at this opposition, they returned in great numbers with a determination to kill him. Midley, fortunately for him, being gone from the estate on business, escaped their vengeance. However, their bloody intentions were not to be disappointed. They were resolved to give a sample of their formidable power, and they actually murdered a Mr. Graham, who resided with the manager as a companion. In Creole-speaking countries such as Matnik, Dominica, St. Lucia and Guadeloupe, Negmawa embodies strength, the strength of those brave enough to leave the plantation and live free in the forest of freedom. British Parliament informed the House of Commons that the situation in Jamaica was not that of Dominica. In his anti-maroon tirade, defending the harsh action taken against them, he claimed that Dominican maroons were far worse. The British Parliament would compare the Maroons of Dominica to the Maroons of Jamaica, stating that the Dominican Maroons were far worse and more savage towards them. They were unable to make a treaty with the Dominicans because they refused to negotiate with them, unlike the Jamaican Maroons who signed a peace treaty with the British. 
Ultimately, the British were forced to pass the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833. In 1838, Dominica became the first and only British colony in the Americas to have a black-controlled government. Jacko was one of the most important Maroon chief commanders. He was born in Africa and was transported to Dominica in the late 1760s, but he escaped soon after. Jacko went on to become a major strategist and was responsible for much of the Maroon activity during the Maroon Wars, between 1780 and 1810. Playwright and culture icon Owen Bully said the following, quote, The Maroons lived in a state within a state. There were actually freedom fighters who succeeded on many fronts and harassed the oppression of the British, especially in those years. It's also worth mentioning that the Kalanago people proved to be a valuable ally, engaging in attacks and raids on settlements. There was significant cultural exchange between the Kalinago and the Africans. The Africans shared knowledge about how to use the astronomical calendar. This was useful in terms of judging when to grow the crops, but the Kalinago showed the Africans the best and most fertile locations to grow those crops in. Certain religious practices such as totemism were brought by the Africans and adopted by indigenous Amerindian people. Thank you for listening. This has been a brief overview of pre-emancipation Dominica. Please subscribe if you'd like to hear more about this island and others in the region.